Hello and welcome to the HTML crash course where we go over all of the basic fundamental concepts and basic parts of HTML that you really need to know in order to be building the most amazing websites on the internet. So before we get started, you need to have one prerequisite and that is called Visual Studio Code. If this is your first time ever being introduced to programming, uh, you might not have heard of this, but most programmers use this tool. So this is a text editor where you can actually run any type of programming language for the most part. And it's an amazing tool for us. So if you don't have it, go to code.visualstudio.com and just click download for your specific platform. So with that being said, once you've actually downloaded that, you can go ahead and open it up and it should look something like this. So before we start with that though, let's go ahead and create a new folder where we will actually house the website that we are gonna make in this tutorial. So I'm gonna just go create that there and then I'm gonna toss that directly on top of VS Code. So hopefully that just opens up for us. And there it goes. Okay. So there's nothing in this folder yet. Let's go ahead and create a file called index.html. So every HTML file, if you can't guess it, ends with a .html. And inside of each file, we have an HTML tag, which is also closed by another HTML tag. So this is a tag, and this is a closing tag. Those are what those are called. Inside of each HTML tag, we also have a head, and the head represents a collection of metadata for the document, right? That's the MDN reference if you just hover over it. But essentially what that means is this just tells the browser and also search engines what the type of content that they're gonna be looking at is actually gonna be about. So it might have some information like a title and, you know, this might be my first web page. If we save this, we're gonna see a blank website. So let's go ahead and open up this index.html. Oops. And as you can see, it says my first web page in that title. Everything else is blank because we haven't added any content to it. But that's pretty cool. So you've just gone ahead and created your first ever website. Congrats. All right, let's get on to some more interesting stuff. So go into the body. The body is actually where we house the elements inside of our uh, HTML, inside of our website. So here you can put what's called a header tag. So there are these tags that allow us to write within them. So let's say, um, hello world. And if we refresh this page, you'll see that text there bolded and large. Now, these tags, there are six of them. So H2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And inside of them, you know, they still just take regular text content. And if we refresh, now you'll see that H6 is smaller. So as you go down, they denote um, categorizations of your content. So the H1, you'll only have one H1 on a page. You should never have uh, many because that signifies that this is what the page is about. And then for each section, you might have an H2. And then for each thing that's inside of one of those sections, you might have an H3, H4, H5, and so on and so forth. So they kind of signify how your page flows. Okay, what if we also wanted to have some text under, underneath here, like a paragraph, right? Well, the P tag, pretty self-explanatory, allows us to uh, put text there. So this is some text for our website. And there it is, okay? And you see how by default, the HTML is kind of nicely formatted for us. Okay, so after we've added our text, Maybe we also want to add an image here. What kind of a website do we have if we don't have some images that look nice? So the IMG tag, short for image, and then the SRC property. So now this is actually a special type of tag that has a property. 
And there are some properties associated with the H1 and the P tags as well, but for this case, they're not very important. So this takes a source for an image. So this can be an image on the internet. So if we look at piano and get one of these images, right? So let's see, what's a good, nice little piano image here. Take that image, toss it there, and rename this to piano, okay? And then we put that piano directly here. And this is a special type of uh, tag where you wouldn't really put anything inside of it, right? It doesn't really make sense for us to close it like this because we wouldn't really have some text here. So what we do is we close it at the end like this. This is called a self-closing HTML tag. And so if I save this now and refresh, you'll see that we have that piano picture there. Really cool stuff. Each image tag also has a width property, so you can give it some number like 100 and it'll make it 100 pixels wide. You can play around with this number and you'll kind of get more of a hang to it as you uh, play around with it some more. And so that looks good. And if you didn't want to download each image that you wanted to use, you can actually go to the URL of the image. So if we just copy the image address and then paste that directly in here, that should also work. So this is an interesting address. Hopefully that works. And there you have it, right? So that is pretty much just as straightforward as it gets, but you usually want to have the image something that you know is gonna be there, right? Those websites can change. So unless you're hosting it on your own servers or your own Google Drive or something like that that you control, then I recommend that you actually have it here inside of your website. Maybe you put it in a new folder called images and then you access it like this, okay? Now the next thing I wanna cover is actually links. So links are denoted by the A tag. And an A tag takes an attribute like the image tag, but this time it's the href. And this is the site that we want to link to. So let's link to google.com. And here you give it the text within the, the uh, tags of what you want it to say. So now if we click this, it will actually go to Google. And you can use this to navigate to different pages on your website as well. So for example, if we made it, made, excuse me, if we made another website page called um, second.html, and then here we created our website. So that is a shorthand in VS Code. If you actually just type in exclamation and then press enter, it will just create a standard uh, placeholder skeleton for your HTML. So that's always good to know. And here we'll just say um, second page. And then if we want to navigate there, we can just say second dot HTML. And so if we click that, we need to refresh, click that, and it goes to our second page. Okay, so those are links. And let's just change this to second page. So now if we want to create a list of items, for example, let's try, let's try doing that. So UL is how you create a list in HTML. This stands for unordered list. And each list has a list item inside of it. And here you tell it the text. So item one, and maybe we wanna have three items. Let's go ahead and refresh. And those are our three items in our list. So you're probably thinking, Yusuf, there's an unordered list. Is there an ordered list? Yes, yes there is. And you just switch that U to an O, and there you go. So HTML out of the box um, is styled by different browsers. So this is Chrome. 
Chrome styles these its own way. Mozilla Firefox or Internet Explorer or Safari also have their own stylings. So they're usually pretty similar, but they can have some weird nuances that you need to be aware of. And a lot of modern frameworks like React or Angular have what's called resetters. So they reset all the styling that might come with the browser so that you work with a blank slate and you don't have to worry about things being different looking on different websites. But really cool stuff, we get styling right out of the box with um, HTML. Okay, next let's look at the div tag. So divs stand for division and you can create a div tag like this. And what they do is they divide the page up into different areas. So for example, if we wanted to create a navigation, maybe we put all of these items in the navigation area, move this up to the top, and we say that this is where the navigation lies. So if we refresh, then these are all grouped together. Now it's an invisible tag, right? Unless you style this with CSS, which we're not gonna do in this series, but in the next series we will. Um, it's an invisible tag, but it actually keeps things together. And if you do want to style this tag, what you're gonna need to know about is classes and IDs, which are a very important part of HTML and CSS. So in order to actually say that we wanna select this specific div, so this let's say is the, the header, and then let's say that we have another div that denotes the content of the page. So in order to actually select this and say that we want to give this specific part a background color of green, for example, we would give it a class and tell it that this was the header. And here we'd give it a class and tell it that this was the content. You can give it any value here, but obviously you want it to be human readable so that when we go and write our CSS, um, we can actually just select this. So just as an example, um, without getting too deep into it, in order to write CSS for header, for example, we would just select it like this and then tell it what background color we want like this. Okay, it's really straightforward. The period denotes that we're selecting a class and there's also the concept of IDs. So classes, you can have multiple um, items with the same class. So here, for example, um, we can call this a list item, right? And we can style each list item um, to look the same. And each item can have the same class. But on a page, you might only allow one header. So here, this is the use case for an ID. Okay, it's a unique identifier. So if you don't have just one of these if you have multiple headers on the page you'll get an html error the page will still display but it's improper html and it'll, you'll lose points uh, with search engines and so forth okay so you really want to um, kind of know the difference between the two but for the most part you're going to be using classes classes are really really important when you want to select a specific element and then make it look a specific way or use JavaScript to manipulate it and make it do something specific. So let's just delete this, make sure that everything is gonna still look the same and it does. So the classes are only there for, to allow us to actually select the items and the IDs are there to do the same. So now that we've learned a little bit about what goes into making a web page, let's get a little bit more technical here and talk about um, a more professional aspect of HTML. So yes, we can create headers and content uh, separations like this, but HTML also has this concept of semantic tags. So semantic tags mean that the tags describe the content that they hold. And so this is a part of the new HTML standard, HTML5. And so we get tags like the nav tag, which tells the browser that this is the site's navigation. So that when somebody, for example, has some uh, reading impairments, 
Um, this can be read out loud to them when they so need it. Another tag is the main tag. This is the tag that encompasses all of the content on your site. So when we save this, this actually shouldn't really change anything. As you can see, it still acts like divs, but these specific tags uh, allow us to denote to the browser that we have a specific type of information here. Now, obviously, you can go ahead and create div tags still, and this could be like a post content, right? If this is going to be a post here with the title of, oh, excuse me, not class name, that's React. <laughs> class is going to be post, right? And so now we have, um, let's say a post and then each post has a heading and then there's also some post content um, you know with an image and a paragraph inside of it oops and if we refresh nothing changes but now we can actually go ahead and style this so that it looks a certain way but the main and the nav tags are actually denoting different types of parts of the site and different types of elements that the browser should be aware of. Now let's actually go back up to the top of this document here and talk about one critical thing that I have not mentioned yet, which is really important. So each HTML document needs to have a doc type. And what a doc type is, is it tells the browser what version of HTML that it should be trying to read. So this is a very short version of the doc type. This is the most modern version of HTML and it's just denoted by HTML. Um, and this is called, this is HTML5. So there's other older versions that didn't have, you know, the nav tags or the main tag. Um, but in the latest standard, you want to make sure that you're actually telling the browser what version of HTML you're using. Another thing that I want to go over is this head tag. So we didn't really spend a lot of time here telling the browsers what this website is actually about. So in order to do that, we use what's called meta tags. So the, H the title tag is one way of telling the browser, okay, so this is the title of the page, but it's also, um, this also tells the search engines what the page is about. So for example, our homepage, says the platform for front-end experts, right? If you go to clientside.dev, you'll see this as our tagline. Um, but you can also signify the description. So we can give the search engine description here. And let me just copy and paste one here like that. So each meta tag takes the name, which is the type of meta tag that you're doing right now, which in this case is a description and then the content, which is the actual text. Okay. So learn critical front end skills in a revolutionary interactive environment. Another one is the, the keywords tag, which tells search engines what keywords you want to rank this page for, or you're gonna to try to rank it for. So here we'd say learn front end and land your first coding job. And this, once you actually deploy your website and it's online, is going to look like this. So I took a screenshot of ours, but this is exactly what it will look like if you just type what I have up here. So you won't see the keywords, but Google will know what keywords you're trying to rank for and then that description from up here will actually show up here and this is the title that we put over here okay so that is the meta tags there's a lot more of them and you can actually find them on the mdn reference which i will link in the description below well with that being said good luck on building your first web page and i hope that with time you progress to building your first website be on the lookout for the css course uh, which is next in the lineup and go ahead and check that out as well so that you can begin making this website look purdy Alrighty, see you in the next video